The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and Smithsonian Center for Education and Museum Studies. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Professor Marianne Zlick is an Associate Professor of English at Montgomery College. Since 2006, she has kept a blog for her students and literature courses ranging from introduction to mythology to world literature and beyond. She has organized field trips to plays, performances, and museums for her students. Her composition courses have examined topics such as the purpose of college, online learning, communities, the impact of Katrina, and ethnic identity. She has helped to organize readings of poems from Persistent Voices, Poetry by Writers Lost to AIDS and Before There Is Nowhere to Stand, Israel Palestine, Poets Respond to the Struggle. Her reviews of Samrat Upadhyay's The Royal Ghosts and other recent fiction have appeared on the Potomac Reviews website. Thank you for coming. Uh, and I should really thank um, Rebecca because she's the one who showed me how to do the Prezi. So, you know, she's, she's the one who got everything started. Okay. Um, it's my uh, Prezi in the beginning. I search America on the Move, Students on the Move to the argumentative research paper in uh, EN 102, and I'm continuing to work with it. In fact, I have some pictures of um, from this semester as well, and we're going to go to we're going to go to the museums. We're going to write eye searches. We're, and I also have to thank um, Librarian Niyati Pandya because you know she's been with me even before America on the Move. She's been with me um, working on the eye search, and she's here today. This is the book I started with the eye search paper. You know, when I was when I started the fellowship, I was you know, oh my gosh, what am I gonna, you know, what am I gonna use as my focus? I already did the eye search paper um, in part. You know, when we went to tw uh, twenty five pages of writing for the students, that I can, you know, I looked at some possible assignments. One of the one of them was the eye search paper, which I kind of use as a diagnostic for people's research skills. And I've noticed, you know, between um, you know working with the librarians and uh, assigning the eye search, I get a much better quality of research from the students. You know, no more websites by muffin or cupcake. Um, <laughs> And I took the, I, I remember the eye search paper, oh my gosh, I remember that from uh, grad school from uh, intro to rhetoric and composition that we learned about Ken McCrory. Uh, in fact, my professor at Purdue talked about her old pal Ken, and I thought, hey, you know, this might be a useful bridge between the beginning of the semester and the end. And... Um, it, the eye search is not an argument. It's the story of your research. You start um, with what you know, assume, or imagine about a topic, what you want to find out, how your search has gone, and what you discover. So it, you know, it's really a, it's a narrative. It's, it's kind, you know, it's, it's, uncon it's an unconventional type of paper for EN 102. You know, Maybe something that they might have been used to doing in 101, but you know here they are doing in 102. And as I said, it's a wonderful bridge between the beginning of the semester and the end when you're working on the the final project. You know the traditional research paper. And um, I all as it's part of my research for this project, I also took a a look at um, this more recent book by uh, Julie Tallman and. Marilyn Joyce, um, making the research and writing and research connection with the eye search paper. This is a much more practical guide, and I, I know uh, at least Antonio is thinking about doing the eye search, and you know I recommended this book to him. It's you know it's more practical. It's written actually by um, Tom, and Julie Tallman, who's a professor, who, who a retired professor of education, and Marilyn Z. Joyce is a high school teacher and also a librarian at a school in, in Maine. And it's more about how to actually do the eye search, not back in the day, but now. You know, with the students we have, with the college we have, 
with um, you know the technology we have, and it's you know it's much 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 more practical, and it's also as as you can see from that little quote in yellow that it's much more adapted to everybody, not just you know the highly educated, highly privileged, but um, Vest also, you know, who wrote the, the introduction to this book also said that, well, you know, it's, it's good for, it's good for everybody, even people who might be, cons you know, considered in special education. And one key concept that's really important that, um, the authors mention a lot is using Bloom's taxonomy, which we might know either from education courses or from orientation to Montgomery College, but using Bloom's taxonomy to help the students develop questions. And you know, another key concept that the authors talk about is um, scaffolding. How you know, it's true that McCrory says, well, you know, I want students to be more independent. I want them to you know, to come up with their own questions, their own projects, their own topics, but uh, the scaffolding helps. And I have, I have this uh, frame the way it is because I want to emphasize how much the eye search was a part of the class. It, it happened right, you know, I, I assigned it right at uh, the midpoint, right um, I signed it right before we broke, or you know the mid you know midterms, and it was due right after midterms. So you know you can see how the the class flowed. That we started, of course, with the writing sample, an introduction to the type of writing one does in 102, the position paper, which is a more traditional. Uh, argumentative paper, the visual analysis, which my students are encouraging me, well actually last semester students are encouraging me to tie into the museum visit a little bit more, the rhetorical analysis, which is the heart of um, EN 102 as it's taught here, then we have the eye search, the bridge from the individual projects to the final part of the semester, which is really um, very, it's I guess, you know, it's, it's very inter, interrelated. The proposal, the annotated bibliography, the rough draft, the final draft, and the presentation are all on the same topic. And instead of having discrete assignments, which might be related, might not be related, that with the final project, everything has to be related. Okay. And uh, I just want to add, too, that, um, you know, both McCrory and Tallman and Joyce say that the presentation's a really, really important part of the eye search because you not only want to gather the information and you know discuss and reflect and tell the story of your research, but you want to share it with others and the presentation is really the best way. Okay. I want to show you uh, my frame for the visual analysis is just pictures. That it's a compare contrast paper, a nanolytical paper, explaining how, actually, you know, examining how elements in two separate pictures compare, um, contribute to the visual uh, cognitive impact of each picture. And the first pair, and I'm going, uh, so on the left hand side, on the right, um, the first picture in the upper uh, left-hand side is a picture that a student took in the summertime of uh, America on the Move. And this is a picture of Interstate 10 in Houston. And one student in the fall decided that he was going to interpret the visual analysis by taking uh, pictures from America on the Move to, uh, and, and comparing them to pictures from another museum, another trans um, actually a museum that's entirely devoted to transportation. It's um, the Virginia Museum of, of Transportation in Roanoke, Virginia. And his paper was a comparison contrast about the websites from both museums. And you know you can see that the museums have two you know very different uh, purposes, very different audiences. 
uh, Smithsonian, of course, is national and international. Virginia Museum of, of Transportation is more local. Then uh, the next set of pictures, left, right, um, are reflect another student's project where she um, looked at ads for different cars, you know, America on the Move being an exhibit on transportation, and she looked at an ad for a minivan saying, well, you know, this is a very feminine ad. This, this ad is, is intended for a woman who wants transportation for her family. And the truck, what she said, was intended for a man, that the ad showed that it was intended for a man. And, you know, this is an you know, different type of project. I, I kind of rolled my eyes when I, I saw her paper at first, but, you know, I think it was a really good interpretation of the assignment. And finally, the picture that's on its own below is also from America on the Move. In fact, it's the big, um, the picture on the, the front page of, of the exhibit. And this is the picture that I'm using to start my students off with the visual analysis that, in, especially in my um, Monday Night 102 class, where we're in a computer classroom, that um, they had to go find a picture that they would compare and contrast with this picture. And some examples of things that, that people found. Um, one person decided that she was going to compare and contrast another exhibit from the Smithsonian, looking at uh, who the intended audience uh, audiences were for each and, and looking at the level of interactivity in each of the exhibits. Another student uh, decided that um, she was going to look at um, this image of a street scene from 1949 and a more recent street scene. And both street scenes are from Portland. This, this museum exhibit, it's supposed to represent Portland, Oregon in 1949. And um, a picture that this student found was um, Portland, Oregon in uh, 2005. So, you know, I see, you know, I'm, I'm seeing uh, a new, ra you know, new range of different um, comparisons and in fact, one one girl also decided that she want she wanted to look at a different museum. She decided that she was going to look at uh, a picture from the the National Air and Space Museum, and a picture from uh, a museum in Nebraska. She, I guess she was inspired by um, my former student above. Okay, but. Although the, the visual analysis is really, you know, it's really good for getting us started thinking, I guess it's my means of scaffolding, getting us thinking about the museum. The eye search is not an end in itself. Even if projects, you know, topics are different, that still the eye search is a way to acquire the skills that will help you when you're working on the final project. You know, even if you think, well, you know, the eye search is this la 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 project, that still you're going to be using the same level of analysis in your annotated bibliography and in the draft of your paper itself. And these are some of the topics that people looked at. Some topics are this, you know, were the same, like the, the girl who did uh, the topic of, of lead, that she did her eye search and her final project pretty much on the same topic. You know, granted, this was a summertime. A number of people did papers on the driverless car, and in fact, you know, the same person who did the paper, the visual analysis of, of the two museums, including the one in Roanoke, he argued that the driverless car might de-skill people, and that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, and the last three below, these were topics that people did in the fall. And I think two of, two of them, the, the first and the third, were topics that came out of the iSearch, and the student who ended up doing the, the final project, um, his paper topic was, was new. He did his iSearch on a different, but 
you know, I, I thought that I'd give you an idea of the range of, of topics that come out of America on the move, that people are not just writing about cars. They're, you know, they're writing about many different, in fact, you know, a lot of papers are on immigration. That actually seems to be one of the more popular ways of moving uh, beyond simply writing about transportation. Although, I mu you know, I must say, you know, that I think tra transportation definitely excites people and interests people. And I've got to shrink this down a bit. But, you know, with any new assignment, you have to think about some of the drawbacks as well as the benefits. And I found that, you know, I, I think that one of the, the drawbacks, and I guess you can see kind of from the picture, is that I really have to work to help students to take this assignment. So, you know, a number really do take it seriously. It's, you know, it, it's, it's a way to really delve into a topic. It's a way to really, you know, learn more about research and, and go beyond, um, you know, what you learn at, at the library and you learn in the classroom. That it, it's, it's, a, it's a way to really see research in a new light. But, you know, since it's not an argument, you really have to work to say this is, you know, this is something you have to take seriously. And as you kind of suspect from uh, what Grace mentioned in her presentation, yes, we had to deal with outside, source, outside forces that I had some problems with um, the government shutdown too, and I had to delay my visit to... Uh, the American History Museum, and I, I wish that I, I could have visited it a little bit earlier. And in fact, if if the shutdown had gone on for a longer time, um, we were going to be going to the the National Building Museum, and and then I was I was starting to worry because unlike the Smithsonian, you have to pay to get into the National Building Museum. But I think even though you know these are all reasons why the eye search can be problematic. That still, you know, these are things that you can deal with, you can work around, and the eye search is still, you know, very, very, very worthwhile. And I think maybe that, you know, that um, item that's a, oh, that's a reason why the eye search is problem. It's also why the eye search is really important, that it forces teachers and students, or students and teachers, to unlearn habits of third-person objectivity and even passivity that it's, you know, it's a way to shake things up. I also wanted to make sure that we, you know, we noticed why the eye search is beneficial as well. And I, I think it's, you know, it's a way to really, really, really um, spend more time on research, you know, and, and all, you know, mindful research and research that develops skills that's, you know, a lot more careful. It encourages student agency because students are supposed to choose their topics. You, you know, I ask students to relate their topics to America on the Move, but there are many ways, you know, as you can see, there are many ways you can relate. You know, this is a huge exhibit. There's a lot, for example, on immigration, on sustainability, on food, and I'll, I'll sh on the last slide, I'll, I'll show you some, some topics that we, you know, we came to. It's appropriate on discipline. In fact, I'd, I'd rather see it as part of writing across the disciplines, because I think you know it's it's a good way to a, approach a topic outside English. In English, it's essentially it's going to be well. You know, this is there are going to be many different topics, but you know maybe in a, a biology or history or business class that that's you know that's another way to focus it. It encourages interdisciplinarity. You know, I, I love it because. I get to read papers on many different fields that I'm not just, you know, reading about the same old, same old. And um, this project discourages data dumps, patch writing, and plagiarism, including recycled papers. You know, I'm, I'm sure that there are iSearch papers on uh, the internet, but it's, you know, it's, it's easy to tell whether or not, you know, somebody's work is, is his or her own. And I also wanted to include, um, I know I haven't been dra drawing your attention enough to people's pictures. This is a picture of one of my students 
with the train that inspired her topic for the eye search, and she ended up writing her um, final project on the impact of industrialization on the environment. So, you know, you can see how, how she moved from the train to, um, you know, the environment as a topic. And I wanted to provide some pictures from the history of transportation, you know, pictures that can get people thinking about what they, you know, what they want to uh, write about. And in fact, I, th I thought I had a, a picture of um, a truck. I had one student last semester who wrote his eye search on uh, a truck, the, eye, the, the truck stop. Um, but you know, we have the electric car, we have um, another picture of a student uh, by a motorcycle, we have bus, you know, representing public transportation, bicycle, we have um, a very, very early primitive um, automobile uh, representing safety issues. Students were really concerned about safety. They, I think that's probably the one thing that shocked them about looking at old and not so old uh, automobiles, you know, oh my gosh, this is not safe. You know, where are the seat belts? Where are the airbags? <laughs> and, you know, I think another issue that we, we dealt with was um, income inequality as well, because people are saying, well, you know, the electric car, that's something that's for rich people. But, you know, you take a look at the early Automobile, and that's something that's for an early adopter of technology. This is the, you know, at that point, only people who like to fool around with with gadgets and things had these cars. You know, everybody else had you know horse and buggies, walked or took the streetcar. So you know, the car that we think is is something that's essential. That it began as a technology that only early adopters used. And the last picture, I really want to emphasize, too, that this exhibit is more than just about the history of technology. There are so many different topics that people, this, you know, this past summer, this past fall, and this current semester will be looking at. That it, and, if, you know, I, um, in the summertime, I had a number of people writing about um, food, you know, both about, you know, the link between food and obesity and, you know, how do we live a more healthy lifestyle. Another person, you know, talked, you know, wrote a paper about eating locally, why it was important to eat locally. Um, I had one student in the fall who did uh, both her eye search and her um, final project on uh, drones. And, you know, yes, this comes out of America on the move because it's, um, you know, it, it's about air technology, it's about, um, you know, our role in the world, and I think if we were to, to have a second, I mean, if we were to continue America on the move, probably the topic that we'd have to deal with would be globalization. In fact, you know, in my uh, current sections of 102, I showed a movie about uh, globalization, and the students, you know, even before doing uh, the visual analysis. Students are, are doing, you know, really interesting work on globalization. And the last is, that's a, enough, that's a Prezi that one of my students did. And I guess, you know, one of uh, Rebecca's descendants. <laughs> and that, that Prezi is on uh, energy. So, you know, it, it's, it's amazing how many different topics can can come out of this exhibit. And I think, you know, it's, it's an exhibit, it's a, a theme that my students seem to be much happier with. Okay, thank you very much.